In this lesson, you are going to learn how to de describe shapes using attributes used in geometry. So, first of all, we're going to look at some important vocabulary terms used to describe shapes. Um, and so we've got attribute is uh, the first one, which describes all the other words. But um, an attribute is a way to describe a shape, um, like the qualities of a shape. So an example is describing the lengths of the side of a shape is an attribute. Um, if you look on the left, you can see vertical, horizontal, vertex, parallel, and perpendicular are some other ways that we will describe um, shapes, which is the attributes. Um, length means that, uh, well, the however long a side is, but um, looking at geometry terms, we're looking at how many um, sides of a shape have the same length. And we use hatch marks to show equal lengths. So those little lines, the little ticks inside um, of the line or whatever on top of the line, those mean that the ones with the singles match with the singles, the ones with the double lines, the double hatch marks match with the double hatch mark lines for each shape, each shape. <laughs> um, vertical means straight up and down, not tilted one way or the other, but exactly straight up and down um, like this wall, for example. <laughs> Um, horizontal means the opposite, so it's exactly um, going across, like level with the floor. It's again not tilted in any one way. Those ones would be um, diagonal. So horizontal is just like this. Another thing that uh, you need to know is the term vertex. That, that means corner of a shape, um, and so it is. It is the place where two sides intersect, where they meet, um, and so adjacent sides. That means they're that sides that that are next to each other, meet or intersect at a vertex. The next thing is parallel. So that means that there are two sides that are always the same distance apart. Even if you were to continue them for infinity, they would never, ever, ever touch because they are exactly um, the same angle. Um, when, when there are parallel um, sides, like on these two shapes here, we use arrows to show that they're parallel. So um, as you can see, the double arrows match with the double arrows and the single arrows match with the single arrows. Um, if you are not sure if lines are parallel, you can grab a ruler and measure the distance between two sides on one side of the shape and then move over to the other side of the shape and see if they're the same distance apart over there. If they are, then that means they're parallel. Um, and then just to show you some examples of non-parallel, um, these shapes have no parallel sides. They all would meet or do meet. Um, next one is perpendicular when two intersect, that says interesting, but it should say intersecting sides form a right angle. Um, and so that's when there's one vertical and one horizontal or it could be tilted, but it has this special angle um, that is like, like this book, this corner has perpendicular um, angles. And so that, that they're also called right angles. And um, they're also 90 degree angles if you were to pull out a, pull, a protractor. Um, and so the way that we show perpendicular is by, by drawing a little square inside of uh, the shape in the corner to show that it's a perfect square, a right angle. Um, and the way to check is you could take something like a piece of paper and match it up onto a shape and see if those lines match exactly on the edges of the paper. Um, here are some examples of shapes that have perpendicular sides. The first two each have four, um, and the last one has two. You'll notice that also they have some sides that are the same length, and they also show parallel on the last one. So let's get into naming shapes using letters. So this is another thing that we're going to be looking at. So um, when we name a shape, we can label each vertex with a different capital letter. It has to be a capital, like an uppercase letter. Don't use lowercase letters because that means something different that you will not learn in this lesson, but it means something different. So when you name a shape, you need to use capital letters. This one has A, B, C. And so we would call it triangle because it's a triangle and then just pick a vertice to start at. This one, they started at A, then they went to B, then they went to C. As long as you can put your finger down 
um, on a vertice, whatever one you start at, and then you trace your finger and go to the next one, put that letter, then the next one, put that letter until you you have all the letters down, then it's good. But if you, you couldn't do it wrong on, on this triangle, but you could on this quadrilateral, you'll notice, so they put down their finger at M and it quadrilateral is just a four-sided shape, by the way. Um, it's all, this is also a trapezoid, but um, put finger at M, then trace to N, then down to P, then to Q, and then M is again. So quadrilateral M, N, P, Q. That's how you name it. You could not say quadrilateral M, P, and Q because M and P are not connected. Next up is naming sides of shapes. So we can use the letters that we use to name the shape, to name the sides. So triangle ABC has three sides. There's AB, AC, and BC. Um, and so it's pretty straightforward. You just pick, pick a side and then look at the vertices that uh, start and finish those sides. Here's another example for quadrilateral MNPQ. Um, the sides are MN, NP, PQ, and QM. Okay, and now we're going to look at describing shapes using attributes. So kind of compiling that together slowly. So here are some um, examples of um, describing a shape using the side lengths. So the first one, all sides are equal, making it a square. Um, and then the second one is some sides are equal, making it a rectangle. Um, this one has no parallel sides, so we can we can tell how many parallel sides it has. Um, the second one has uh, one set of parallel sides. It actually kind of looks like it has two sets of parallel sides, but it's only written that it has one. Um, we can also describe um, like well, let's just use this this quadrilateral as an example, so we can we can say what the sides are. We can say um, which are parallel, so sides M, N, and Q, P are parallel. Um, it, we can also say which ones don't intersect, so side M, N, and Q, P do not intersect. We could also also say sides M, N, and P, N, P intersect at vertex N. There's more ways to describe that shape, but that's just some. Um, so let's look at our three examples. So the first example, we're going to use letters to name each shape. So first of all, we need to decide what shape that is. The first one is a triangle. Anything with three sides that's closed is a triangle. Um, but we do need to use those letters. So we're going to start at P just because I felt like it. P, Q, R. We want P, Q, R. You could, you could have went R, Q, P. It doesn't matter. Uh, but triangle and then the letters. Um, and then the next one, if you tilted the, the, the shape, um, normal be a square, so I put a square, um, and then I just started at the alphabetically first letter B, so B C D E, square B C D E. Next up is example two. Which shapes have all sides the same length, some sides the same length, and parallel sides? And so um, we're going to just focus on all sides the same length first. When you see questions like this, it's really helpful helpful to just focus on either one attribute at a time or one shape at a time because this can be overwhelming. Um, so we're going to just look at which shapes have all the side, all sides the same length, like every single one. And I only see one, H. I, I thought G for a little bit, but then I noticed that the bottom portion is smaller than the other side. Okay, next, some sides the same length. I'm going to circle that in a green circle to, to show the differences. Um, and so I found, I found two, D has some sides the same length, and uh, E has some sides the same length. So D, like it has, these ones are the same length and these ones are the same length, but they're not all the same length. Same with E. Okay, and then the last one is parallel sides, which I'll circle in pink. So remember that means that the, the um, sides will never touch and there's actually not that many um, on this page. There's E, E, and F that have at least some parallel sides. F only has one and then D and E have two each, two pairs. And then lastly, example three for each shape below, identify and name per perpendicular sides. So remember, that's the that's the 90 degree right angles. And so um, you can use um, if you're on the if you're going to do it on the computer, you can draw a little square on it um, like I did here. I put little squares in the corner in the corners and they they match exactly or the vertices, I should say. Um, or you could grab something that has a right angle and hold it up. Either way, we have to identify and name the perpendicular sides. So this is how you do it. You do an upside down T in between the sides. Um, and so AB is perpendicular to BC. That's one way. Then there's uh, three more. 
Uh, BC is perpendicular to CB. CD is perpendicular to DA. DA is perpendicular to AB. Whew. Okay, next one, there is the one, if I were to draw that box in the other corners, it wouldn't work, they wouldn't fit exactly. So there's only one and it is MJ is perpendicular to JK. And the lastly, um, I drew the, I drew the squares inside and they worked perfectly. Um, and so these are the sides, RN is perpendicular to NP, NP is per perpendicular to PQ, PQ is perpendicular to QR, and QR is perpendicular to RN. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that is how you show or to describe shapes in geometry. And uh, it's a little bit wide open, but um, your assignment is uh, pretty straightforward. So I think, I think uh, you'll have some fun with it.